Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to do this recording for your class of project cycle, project planning and management. And the topic I want to discuss today is project cycle. The reason why I'm bringing it in a, a recording video kind of is because I'm not within main campus. I'm all the way in Bugema University, Arua campus. And I'll be here for three good weeks. So this lecture is for this week. That is the project cycle. And uh, before we start, let's pray. Dear Lord, we want to say thank you for being with us. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for protecting us. Allow me to communicate to the students through this technology. For I am very far from them. And we don't want to lag behind. Be with us. Bless them. Provide for them always. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, allow me to talk about today. The first topic that we looked for is we talked about a project. And in looking at this, we looked at a project in details. We look at the characteristics, we look at the features, we look at the forms, we look at the types, and we look at some of the reasons why projects even fail. Today, I want us to look at the second topic, and we call it the project cycle. The question is, how do projects evolve? From what time to what time do you say that you have a project and the project is moving? So this our second chapter today is going to talk about a project and a, a project cycle. A project cycle, if I can define it and make everything move, is, we can talk about a project cycle being the recognition within the project process. We can call it the recognition within the project process. Do you recognize, the main word here is the recognition within the project process. In this lecture, as we continue, we shall understand what the word process refers to. So when I talk of a project cycle, I'm looking at it in terms of, can me and you, can we recognize the project process. If the project is moving from the initial to the term that it expires, what happens? Can I go to a field and say this is a project cycle? This project is a certain level. Can I go and look at a project, the implementation? And then with that, with that I understand that this is the process. And I can look at this project A and I say it is at this level. I look at project B, I say that is this level. I look at project C and D and E and F. All these projects in this organization, how do I determine them? If I am going to be the project manager of this organization, and as you become the project manager or the programs manager, you are looking at the projects down there. Do you have the expertise that at the end of the day, you just look at these projects and then you say, this is at the initiation, this is at the middle level, this is in the termination level. Now this brings us this, and then you're saying, the idea of development projects as the time-bound creation of physical assets has led in turn to the recognition of these faces within the project process. And from there to the concept of the project, what? cycle. So we look at this and everybody works with time as we look at the parameters of our project last time. Now, as we continue, somebody can even come and say that another definition of a project cycle is a project cycle is the sequence. We can say it is the sequence it is the sequence of phases. The sequence of phases that a project goes through, the sequence of phases that a project goes through, that a project goes through. You and me, we are above 18 right now. And if you talk about the stages in life, we understand them because we understand the sequence of these phases. If somebody just tells you that Ronald Chenokoth, the son of Ronald Chenokoth, is a toddler, you understand the sequence. When they tell you he's an adolescent, you understand the sequence. When they tell you he's an adult, you understand the phases. And this leads us that for you to understand this, 
we understand you are saying that it's a sequence of phases that a project goes through from its initiation to closure. From its initiation to when? To closure. From the point of start to the point of ending, do you understand the phases? What comes after this? What comes next? I am here in Arua for a special mission of the church. The church gave Bukema University three centers to go on and evangelize. Now, in all these, we came the first day. We arrived here. We have known for these three weeks, we have a program how the thing is going to go up to the last day. And if you ask me, Ronnie, how is the thing moving on? I will tell you that because I understand the project cycle. I've given a report to my bosses. They're calling, asking me, how is the program? How is everything moving on? How is the peer system? How is the site? What, 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 what? And all of them, I cannot talk about the final. Right now, I can only talk about the initiation phase. And this leads me to the second, another part, that project management life cycle should be able to define the following. If you look at the project cycle, one and two, that all this project management, with, with the aim of doing them, you should be able to know what work needs to be achieved. Just by looking at this, you can easily understand that what is it that you need to achieve. You will also understand with the knowledge and having the project management life cycle. It should able, be able also to define for you who will be involved among the team members. I have 30 students with me here. We are 30, not students. Staff and faculty and students, we are about 30 of us. Here, managing three sites. But in these three sites, we have people who are responsible for food. We have people responsible for the site. We have people responsible for someone, peer system, and all of us. And why? Because we are divided and we understand the cycle. And this cycle involves what team members are going to do. We are also saying that this definition, getting to define a project life cycle, it will also help you. What are the project deliverables? What do you expect? If I can recognize within the project process, let me say I'm cooking matoke. When I see you peeling matoke, I understand the end result of it. I know you are cooking matoke. Though if you come to Kenya, then you say that you are cooking matoke. It's a different thing. For Kenyan, you mean matoke after peeling, it might not be the smashed matoke that you understand here in Kenya. And these are some of the challenges that we have. Now, with the mission, with being able to define the project life cycle, you should also be able to know how to monitor the performance of each phase. How do I monitor the performance of each phase? And this gives me that with all this, what are the characteristics of a project life cycle? What are the characteristics of a project life cycle? What are the characteristics of a project life cycle? I'm talking about characteristics of a project life cycle. What do I need to know about a project life cycle? That when I talk about it, you understand it. Number one characteristics of a project life cycle, that every project has got this characteristic. <coughs> Excuse. <coughs> These characteristics are better understood when you look at the phases. So that's why we are saying the first characteristic of a project life cycle is the initiation phase. How do you start the project? What does it take to start the project? With the project? What do you need to do to start the project, the initiation phase? The second characteristic is after initiating, we go to the planning phase. I have known what it takes. I have known what it takes to start the project. But not next, the planning phase. How do we plan for this? 
In here, we talk about how do you organize and prepare. How do you organize and prepare for the project? The second, the first one, we are talking about how do you start the project. By the end of this lecture, we are going to go through this. What does it take to start a project? The second phase we are talking about, the planning phase, we are saying, what does it take to organize and prepare the project? The third phase, that if you have planned, then we go to the execution phase. Execution phase. Others will call it the implementation phase. Now that I started the project, and now I have planned for it, what plan was it? It is not a plan when until we execute it. And in the execution phase, we are saying we carry out the project. We are carrying out the project. If you say, like now in this three weeks that we are here, we have people who are preaching, we have people responsible for the peer system, we have people responsible for the food. The question is, you have been planning in Bugema since January. Now it is May. If you are prepared to teach family life, now we want to see it executed. If you are prepared to talk about children, now we want to see it executed. The people who are responsible for question and answer, they are there. The people who are responsible for building the platforms, they are there. The people who are responsible for praying for every time are also there. Execution phase, we want to see everything taking place according to plan. And if we talk about this, we are saying we are carrying out the project. What does it mean? It means there is implementing and where it does not meet, we come back and talk together, live together. And in this, we have another strategy. Right now, if we are no longer planning, it is a plan that is already put into place. Now, if the plan is not going according to our will, we need to come back and say, hey, team A, team B, team C, this is not working. No team A, as it worked this way, we did this way. All these are strategies that we come. And then the third, the fourth phase, the fourth characteristic of a project cycle is the termination phase. The termination phase. What does this entail? It entails closing the project, which many of us do not want. Which majority of us do not want. So those who are working in the NGO, they don't want to hear about this last part, closing the project. And it is real that a good project is a project that has got the initiation phase, idea is generated, idea is put into place. Then we agree, we come down and start planning. In the planning, we know what is to be done. A, B, C, this is the budget. Now, after doing all that, we have raised the funds because all this is planning. After raising the funds and to getting the measures and getting everything, now we start executing. Money meant for transport goes to transport. Money meant for this, what is supposed to be bought, what is supposed to be solicited, all this is done. And lastly, the termination phase. In three weeks, Bugema University is in Arua. What will happen at the termination phase? Now, this gives us the next part of our discussion, that now that we have known that what is a project, we have also seen that when we define a project, we need to know the deliverables. We need to know what, who is responsible. We need to know all these things, the time they take. We have also understood that it has characteristic. There must be initiation. Initiation is followed by planning. Planning is followed by execution. Execution is followed by termination. It has to end. Now, what are the benefits of having this knowledge? What are the benefits of having knowledge on project life cycle? What benefits do you have? Me and you, there are only three main benefits that we have. That if I know, I have knowledge on project cycle management. Project cycle management. Project life cycle, and we add management. That I have this 
skills or I have this knowledge. Number one thing, it helps professional service teams to be more proficient and profitable. It makes me and you, the professionals, to be more proficient, to be more proficient and profitable. We need to know what is going to take place. We need to know what next. We are always ahead of the project. Number two, that when we have knowledge on project life cycle management, it makes communication flow. It enhances, it enhances communication flow. I can give an example. If you are a mother and you have a child, or if you, at our age, and you meet a boy or a girl who is going through the stages of adolescence, and we have gone through this, there are some things that they will do that annoy, but they are doing this because of that stage. I remember some of us when we were adolescents, we started developing interest on the other gender, on the other sex. My mother was my class teacher. I don't remember her calling me to the staff room, carrying me. I don't remember my colleagues being called because they, in, in, a love affair is being seen. Developing interest on the other person is being seen. I don't remember those. But I remember the counseling sessions. My mother, being my class teacher, and the one who was teaching us home science or home economics, coming in and explaining the process to us. Explaining the reasons why most men, most boys, most gents in class at that time were very clean. Explaining the reasons why ladies were tying cardigans near their waist at certain days of the month. Explaining the concept why we were reserved. Explaining and all this made us to come out as an elite class because she was not only helping the son, she was also helping other children. And many people, we had three streams, many of us in other streams started coming in. When it comes to home science time, they started coming into our class. Reason? Because there was an extra concept, extra care that my mother was giving to the son. And the son looked at it as a class. But at the end of the day, I understood my mom. No more beatings. Because we need to explain this. Now, me and you who are learning project, when we understand the stages, the phases, we recognize the planning, the project process, then communication can come. Communication can flow. Accounts, we need this money. Project managers go and implement this way. The drivers, the security, the, every, the donors, because we understand the project cycle management. Number three, and lastly, it emphasizes, with this knowledge, it emphasizes reporting and examining the previous projects. It emphasizes when we have knowledge in project cycle management, we are saying it emphasizes reporting. It emphasizes reporting and examining previous projects and examining previous projects. With knowledge in project life cycle management, one of the benefits that you're going to get is you know how to report. I have this team here. Every day before we sleep, the team leaders report. We did this, we did this, we did this. The next morning after our prayer, before breakfast, they come and then we say, no, to this team, today we are doing this, we are doing this, we are doing this. This is what we expect. Why? Because the leaders have also been taken through the project cycle management of their sites where they are. Ladies and gentlemen, project life cycle, a very interesting part. Allow me to give you some of the two examples of, or I can call them some of the two samples of project life cycle that I can talk about. I love the first one. And this one, 
I'll, I always refer to it mostly dealing with humanitarian organization. And it says that the first part we need to do for us to learn of a project is we need to go through what we call needs assessment. That as we go to the communities where we need to stay, before you start a project, you need to do what we call needs assessment. Through using a situation analysis, you can come through and understand what are the needs of these people, what are the needs of this society. You need that and you have all of them put together. Now, after doing needs assessment and you have all this, that you have assessed and this is the problem, then you go to the second stage, that after assessing, you need to plan. And the second stage is called planning, or other books refer to it as what? design. What are you going to do? If you wake up in the morning and as you wake up in the morning you realize it rained and it is drizzling. You need to come out with an umbrella. You need to come out with warm clothes. Simply because you are planning against the needs assessment. But if there is a problem in the planning stage here, how do we handle it? We don't correct it at this part. We correct it by going back. We correct it by going back to the needs assessment. That whenever I have a challenge as a, a manager, that we need, after doing needs assessment and in the planning, and if there's anything of concern, we go back to the needs assessment. Now, when everything is right, we go to the third stage. And the third stage, we call it implementation. The third stage, we refer to it in this as implementation. What does it refer to? That after I've designed, I know what I'm supposed to do, I have planned, then I need to implement. Whenever we come to implementation, and the implementation has got issues, the implementation has got a concern, what do we need to do? We don't correct it at planning. We go back to our needs assessment. Because this is everything. This is the origin of everything. That when we plan and plan has got issues, go back to needs assessment. You come and you start implementing, and the implementation, you realize there is a concern. Go back to the needs assessment, come back to planning, come back to implementation. And when everything at implementation is okay, then we go to the fourth stage, which in this, we call it monitoring which in this example we call it monitoring. And in your monitoring, you realize that something is going astray. We are supposed to take this lane without passing this demarcation. And we realize that we are crossing against the demarcation. Now, what does it take? We come to monitoring. And in monitoring, we are saying, as you monitor and you realize there's an issue in monitoring, you don't come and correct it at implementation. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to come back to the needs assessment because what you are monitoring, it should be according to the problem that was generated. Then you realize the monitoring aspect controls the planning, controls the implementation and the monitoring. When monitoring is done, then we come back. A good manager will always review when you realize that the project is moving on smoothly, we come to review. And in the review, that's where you'll understand. Planning, you are successful. Implementation is okay. Monitoring, everything is moving on. And in the review, when you now start pulling everything, you realize that there's something that we have not done properly. Then we need to come back again to the needs assessment. We don't correct it at the monitoring. You don't come back here we have to correct it back from the needs assessment, follow it up again until it is fixed. And then after review, ladies and gentlemen, the last stage is evaluation. The last stage is evaluation. And in evaluation, we are saying that at the end, you evaluate to get the impact. And what are you going to evaluate? Whatever you are evaluating is the needs assessment. What was it that we wanted to sort out? 
We wanted to prevent the spread of HIV AIDS. We wanted to provide books to kids. We wanted to provide sanitary towels to the ladies in this school. And in your evaluation, you are evaluating to get the impact, to understand what has been the impact. And is it sustainable? Now, when you realize that you are evaluating and you have questions that the project has not realized its impact, that the project is not realizing its impact, we don't question the review. We don't question monitoring. We question from the needs assessment. And from this, when everything is okay, the evaluation report will always form another needs assessment. The evaluation report will always form another needs assessment. Allow me to give you this example. I worked with an institution called ADRA Finland in Kenya. And this was the only African institution. ADRA Finland, that's the only project they had in Africa. We were dealing with HIV AIDS. When we were dealing with HIV AIDS, planning, stigma and all that, when we reached the evaluation exercise, we realized that we had a challenge with our people with our clients. They were coming to the hospital, they were getting the ARVs, the stigma was, one of the objectives was talking about stigma, which we managed to beat. Another objective was talking about what? ARVs. The third objective was talking about their, 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 their welfare, which we were not handling so much. As we thought of, <coughs> After giving them the drugs, after breaking the stigma, they can go back to their farms and dig. No, that was not the case. When we came and found out, the evaluation report that we had gave a gap. It gave a gap. And this gap was on food security. But these people that we are talking to, these people that were giving ARVs, they were not having the energy to still have some food. So the next project that came in, the evaluation report gave to us was another needs assessment. It was on food security. And Adra Finland thought of how to move on. And in this food security, they gave us another project called Ecosan, Ecosan Toilets. Now for food to grow in this area, they realized that these people needed manure. And most of the manure is in form of urea, which was common in that area. And this urea, and then we had the other manure. They asked themselves, where do we get this? So they came with a project, which is Ecosan Toilet. This is toilet built on the top to avoid contaminating the water, to avoid contaminating the soil. So the urine, they were teaching them how to ferment it to become urea. And the, the, the feces were also being managed to become manure. And those people who adapted this and accepted this, believe me, another project ran. And the project was food security. The first one was on HIV AIDS. Now when we had got the HIV AIDS and it reached its evaluation point, the evaluation report came with what? Food security. It went through. And in food security, we realized, by the time they were in food security, it gave back to another project, dentistry. Because most people are talking to us, well, good morning. They don't want you to see their teeth. And all that again came in. And the projects continue evolving, evolving, evolving. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to mention one important part here. This is this part. Between evaluation to the needs assessment, the idea that you have knowledge and you recognize this, you are developing a skill called PCM. And in PCM, this skill, as we talk about PCM, we talk about the skill is on project psycho management. Most organizations are going to sell you, we are looking for somebody the qualification of social work. We are looking for somebody the qualification of development studies, public admin, counseling. But you are going to manage a project, and then they put it, knowledge in PCM is an added advantage. They are not looking at anything. 
they're just looking at it. Can you interpret a project cycle? And why is it important for them? It is important for them because they want, by the time they give you the project, the first project in your life in this organization, you take the project through this. And when it reaches the last stages, you go through what we call that. Meaning, in this evaluation to another needs assessment, the evaluation report should give us another project. The evaluation report should give us another project project. That makes the project life cycle. This is the first sample that I have. Now somebody at the back of his mind is asking himself, you are only talking about humanitarian projects, HIV AIDS, food security. What about these projects like building a house? What about these projects like buying a car? What about these other projects? And I know at the back of your mind you are also asking yourself, there are some projects that do not need evaluation. You are right. You are right. And this other type of project starts with the first part. They call themselves, it's called identification. Can you identify this project? You hear the government has identified, we need good roads. A house, a family has identified, we need a house. Now, when they have identified the project that they want to handle, then they go to the, through the second stage, and the second stage is called formulation. The second stage is called formulation. And what are they formulating? Just as you and me, when it comes that you have thought and you have had a desire, then you go through the second stage. And this stage, it always runs up and down. You will always continue figuring, if I do this, what happens? If I don't do this, what happens? So the arrow here is always up and down. That's why it is put in a formulation manner. Meaning, you go up, down. You ask yourself, what is it? And in, in formulation, four things takes place. One, two, three, four. That in this, you have a heap of issues. And this heap of issues, we can call it outline design. You have a lot of projects. It is raw. You think of, if I do this, what happens? Now, we are saying after identification, it goes to the formulation. And in formulation, four things happen. And the first one is outline design. You have a lot of issues that are not cooked well. They are not done properly. Then from there, you start thinking. You start cooking them. Then in that process of cooking them, you are doing what you call appraisal. In that process of thinking and trying to organize yourself properly, you go through this, the process of what? Appraisal. And as you appraise this project, as you think of appraising this project, some things happen that at some points you start to leave them. You call themselves abandon. You start leaving them. You abandon that that is not going to give you the necessary answers. Now, from abandoning here, you realize you have now what we call a detailed design. You can even call it a detailed plan. Meaning that you are now confident of what you have decided. You are confident of what you want to do. Now you have a detail. So four things that happen in formulation. A heap of issues brought together. You start organizing this, 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 this. You abandon and then you have a detailed design. Now, the third stage that takes place here is the stage of what? Implementation. Now that you have designed, what are we going to implement? The stage of what? Implementation. Whatever you have detailed, whatever you have designed, then you start implementing it. And after implementation, this is one funny thing, that we can go direct to evaluation. Things like roads, things like houses, that immediately they go through implementation, the projects can be evaluated. And when it is evaluated, the evaluation report can be used as another identification. And there are those projects that things like road, you don't even need to evaluate. That after implementation, you hear them saying, the president is coming to do what? to commission the road. When the president commissions the road, or when this person commissions the road, the road is made what? Operational. 
And when the road becomes operational, then you realize you will never sit down that when you implement, you make the road is commissioned. It is made to work. And when it is made to work, meaning that it is what? Operational. And most of the time, these roads when they're made operational, they don't go through evaluation. They come direct again to another identification. And this is the project. That's why we are saying such like projects prefer those who are going to do projects that you realize at the same time you are implementing it, the project is serving his due course. Ladies and gentlemen, as we continue, we ask ourselves now, the idea of project cycle that we have has got much value for a project manager. And it serves as a usual, useful basis for understanding the project. Many versions of project life cycle have been produced, many. And out of them, they have their basis. The idea that projects go through a number of clearly defined stages in a process of their project is established. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever the difference in all the project life cycles that you're going to have, whatever the difference, the project life cycle has got some basic concepts. I don't know which book you will read after this class. I don't know where you refer to after this class. But with my simple knowledge, I get to understand that whatever you are going to look at, these are the basic concepts of a project cycle. Basic concepts that one needs to know. That there are only six, one, two, three, four, five, six. That out of these six, we are talking about number one thing that every project will take you through. I don't know which one you are going to look at you will hear something about identification. All needs assessment. All of them, the concept, the basic concept is we need to initiate something. It has to come from somewhere. Number two, if you look at all this, when you think of it coming from somewhere, you identifying it, you having the needs assessed. Then the two, second one we are talking about, you will have to do something with that after that we go to formulation. Or in the other side we call it planning. The other side we call it planning stroke design. Planning all design. That the moment you have assessed and you have it, then you need to come in and formulate. You need to come in and plan and design. The third stage that we have here is, we can call it implementation. Allow me to use a different pen because it is so special in its explaining. We call it implementation. You only implement what you have formulated or what you have planned or designed about. And fourth stage here, we can call it commissioning. The other side, they refer to it as monitor. That as you commission, what are you commissioning? You are putting something into operation. You are making... The same, you will never monitor something that is not operational. And then the fourth one here, we have what we call operation. The fifth one, operation. And the other side, we call it review. You only look at what is operational, and then you review it. And lastly, ladies and gentlemen, we have what we call evaluation, the sixth stage. Evaluation. No matter what book you are going to read, ladies and gentlemen, these six are the basic concepts of project cycle. The basic, basic concepts of project cycle. Now, I don't know. Somebody at the back of your mind is asking, why are they different? The first one, if you look at it, it, it is cyclical in nature. 
the idea that it retains the idea that project development should be a learning process. If you look at the first one, needs assessment, planning, and, and you realize whenever you have a problem, you go back. It brings the idea that in la project life cycle management, the whole idea is a learning process. You keep on learning. We keep on learning. We keep on learning, learning, learning. The second one that we have looked at where we have identification and then we have formu formulation, it is a version that it highlights the various stages related to planning and implementation, but often failed entirely to include the operational stage. In that, you look at it, that with it it says, after implementing, then I can evaluate and go back. But it does not include the operation part. Somebody will argue that there is no way you can come after three years and evaluate a road. It has been working. It started working even by the time they're making it. So those are some of the reasons why the two are different. Those are some of the reasons why the two are partly different. Ladies and gentlemen, this forms the lecture of today, Project Life Cycle. We have looked at it and we have said, we have looked at the definitions, which we say that number one, it is, it is the recognition within the project process. We went further and say that it is the, the, the sequence of phases that a project goes through from its initiation to its closure. We have also gone further and looked at the characteristics of the project life cycle. And we said it has initiation phase, planning phase, execution phase, and termination phase. And then we went further and looked at what are the benefits of having knowledge in project life cycle management. And we said, number one, it helps you, me and you professionals, to be more proficient and profitable. It also makes ease of flow of communication. And then we say that it emphasizes on reporting and examining previous projects. And lastly, we looked at the two samples of the project cycle. And at the project cycle, the first one we said, it is cyclical in nature. Why? Because it encourages more of learning. And the second one, we say it, it, it is not cyclical in nature, but it tries to look at other parts and it has failed to recognize the operation. And the argument is, I've done this and it is operational. Why then should I go back and then start looking at me as if it is a fresh thing that is starting to work from the first day? And we have finished our lecture today by saying, no wonder which book you are going to look at. The basic concepts of a project life cycle are six. It deals with either identification, stroke assessment. It deals with formulation, stroke planning, stroke design. The third stage that combines all those is implementation. The fourth one is commissioning or monitoring, operation or review with the fifth one. And lastly, it ends with what? Evaluation. And one thing that we have learned today that organizations are going to look at people with knowledge in project life cycle. Why? Because they want to see how you can relate the evaluation and the needs assessment. If we can have that knowledge and you can relate that, then we are considered that we have knowledge in PCM. Just as I've explained, most evaluation reports form the next needs assessment. Ladies and gentlemen, that marks the end of our class today. And we have an assignment to understand and to do. Good morning.